Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm here to talk about progressive enhancement. Um, I've given this talk before, but I gave it at places that it wasn't a meetup that was about a framework that, that required client-side rendering. So I kind of looked through my slides to see which ones were the most controversial ones, and I thought I'd talk about those. Um, <laughs> so this is kind of the, the summary view that people, the, the top-level view that people give when they're saying about progressive enhancement. It, it's a simple idea of separation of concerns. We have HTML, which is separate from our CSS, which is separate from our, J our JavaScript. And we have the JavaScript there for the interactions, CSS presentation. The information is contained in the HTML. Now, as we saw from the talks already today, and as you know from using Meteor, you don't have to do it like this. You can, you can render your HTML with JavaScript. You can even use JavaScript to, to, to you put your CSS into components and things like that. So, Quite often, people that talk about progressive enhancement don't do themselves any favors by just strictly talking about this, because that's not just what progressive enhancement is. We're not just talking about server-side rendering. rendering where for me, progressive enhancement is kind of admitting that we don't know that much about the people that are using our, our applications. We, we don't know what devices they're using. There's no one browser that people are using. They're using all sorts of different browsers with all sorts of different features. And at every single level of this, even if we don't do it in this, these same levels, within HTML, some people will support tags, other people don't. And we can structure our markup in such a way that if it doesn't understand that tag, it ignores it. The same with CSS. So if you're using something like a background gradient in CSS, if you've got a dark background gradient, you put a white, color, white as the color on top of that. Now, that's fine in modern browsers, but an older browser won't recognize a background gradient. It will understand the color property. So you have a white text on white background. So we can get around that by just putting a black background. And then the background gradient will override that. So Progressive enhancement isn't just something about JavaScript and having JavaScript turned on. Progressive enhancement is a mindset of building things in a way that, that you've got a fallback there that will work, even if the, the new feature that you're trying to use um, isn't supported. And it's actually a, a kind of, it lets you play with more features. It lets you try new things and not have to worry so much about the older versions of things. And it's even something we do in JavaScript. Um, just because someone's got JavaScript turned on, it doesn't mean they've got access to every feature within JavaScript. You can't just use every feature. You have to do feature detection, check if a feature's there and it's, it's working properly before you try and use that. You have to try and detect those errors and provide something useful to the user so they can understand what's going on. This, this is a diagram from Google. And I think it, it nicely shows how our jobs have just got more difficult over time. Um, we started off with just simple browsers. We added more, more browsers. We added more devices, more ways of interacting with those devices. We added all these different features. And, Really, what we're trying to do is support as much of this as possible. We want to support the widest variety of devices, people, and users that we can, we can actually support. But it does get difficult. Um, so yes, the web is a work in progress. The reason I'm really here is to talk about EnhanceConf, which is a conference dedicated to progressive enhancement. I wanted to just cover that about, it's, it's not just about JavaScript. I wanted to cover that at first. There's a lot more to it. And really, what EnhanceConf is about is trying to work out what, what does progressive enhancement mean for web development in 2006? You've got people talking about offline as an enhancement, making things, like, making things work offline by default, and how you can uh, make your application work like that. So on the 4th of March, we have a conference called EnhanceConf, which is a whole day talking about progressive enhancement. It's not just going to be, should we do progressive enhancement, yes or no. We get to dive into a lot of the issues and really talk about the different angles on it um, and, and, and really have a debate about it. So I'm going to talk about the speakers quickly. There is a discount code, which I'll come back to at the end, but you can get a discount on tickets if you're interested. So we're going to start the morning talking about why we do progressive enhancement. We're looking at some of the assumptions we make in web development, looking at some of the different devices. So Anna Debenham is going to look at games console browsers and some of the different devices people use. They're modern devices. It's not, they're not old technology. It's the latest technology, but the actual browser support still isn't very good, the features that they've got there, which, again, things like feature detection can help. And then Stefan Tilkoff is going to give an architect's perspective. The second section, we're going to have um, a look at some more real-world examples. So Forbes Lindsay from Facebook, um, and he's the guy that maintains Jade as well. He's going to be talking about server-side rendering, client-side rendering, um, and building things that can render in both places. We've got Ollie from The Guardian. He's going to be talking about how they implemented service workers. And Ola from the Hoodie team, again, doesn't do server-side rendering at all, but there's still a lot to be said there about how Hoodie works and how it's done. Um, so it uses the thing called App, App Cache Nanny to do its offline stuff. After lunch, we've got Phil Hawksworth and Stephen Waller debating whether things like progressive enhancement constrain design, whether they mean that we're building less interesting sites, worse interfaces, or, or if they can actually, by working with the grain of the web, we can, can build things that really work and provide that best possible user experience. Adam Silver will talk about embracing simplicity. 
do you even need all these enhancements? Can you just have a really simple thing? And is it possible that the simplest thing can provide the best possible experience? Jen Simmons is going to be talking about a lot of the, so there's a lot of new CSS properties coming in in 2016 that are going to change the way that we can do layouts. But we want to do it in a way that will still work for older browsers and will provide a nice experience whether you support those features or not. And Jen, Jen Simmons is going to give us some examples of those. At the end of the day, we're going to look to the future. Um, thinking about how we can build interfaces when we don't actually know anything about the devices. What about building for devices that haven't been built yet? What about building for things like Amazon Echo? How can, we, how can we build for things when we don't even have a user interface? There's no idea of a screen. We're just, it's just something that you can talk to. So Robin Christopson is going to be talking about inclusive design. Steven, uh, Stephanie Murillo is going to talk about the things to think about when we're writing copy and as we're designing the actual conversations that we're having with our users. And Aaron Gustafsson will talk at the end just about building for devices that we don't know about. So that's the main bit of the line. We've also got a workshop, um, which is on the day before, which is run by Aaron Gustafsson called Planning Adaptive Interfaces, which is just, um, it's a rare opportunity to spend a day with Aaron. Um, he's also got a book out, Adaptive Web Interfaces, um, which, in fact, if you get a combined ticket at the moment, you get a free copy of his book. That's it. That's all I've got to say. Um, so if you've got any questions, come grab me, um, and hopefully that was interesting. Thank you.